Welcome to The Riff. Today, Jody Dow, the director of the Dream Center, gets to sit down with Jennifer Kennedy. Jennifer is a legend at the Dream Center. The Dream Center kitchen is named after her, for real. Today, they explain how the Dream Center has been able to serve over 10,000 meals this year that are both healthy and tasty. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, welcome to this week's episode of The Riff. I'm Jody from the Dream Center, and I have with me today one of our longest standing Dream Center volunteers, a dear, dear friend of mine, uh, Miss Jennifer Kennedy. Jennifer, thanks for being with yes, us. Yes, I think I met with you for coffee, even before the Dream Center opened, just to talk to you about it. Yes. So. Jennifer sends me this, I think you sent me an email. I did. And uh, we had announced that the Dream Center was going to open. And if you're new to the Riff or North Point, uh, Dream Center is a community outreach of North Points um, and the Springfield community, for being honest. And so we get to provide help for today, hope for tomorrow through a lot of practical ways. And Jennifer helps with all of these practical ways we serve. Mm -hmm. So we were still just kind of in ideation phase and you reached out to me. And I remember, I have to tell you, I was very nervous to meet you for coffee because you knew what you were doing. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I'm about to meet with someone who knows how to do my job and they're going to know quickly that I don't know yet. <laughs> no. And I was just so excited that this was opening up here in Springfield because my family and I, we'd been here for about a year and a half and had really not found a place to plug in um, and had started joined, went to North Point for about six months. And this, all of a sudden this was opening up just right down something that we really wanted to get involved with. Yeah. I remember so. sitting with you. Uh, we went to the Dancing Mule, which is is still yes. one of my favorite local coffee shops mm -hmm. in Springfield, uh, chai tea latte there with almond milk, top notch. And you were just sharing your heart for even your story mm -hmm. and um, your family's story. Of It's always kind of been embedded in you that you're going to serve others. Mm -hmm. And since then, I just, I get the chance to say thank you to you because you can't escape right now. No, I know. Uh, that we could not do what we do at the Dream Center without you. And even if we could, we wouldn't want to. Uh, you're a gift to our team. You're a gift to the community that we serve. So uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at the Dream Center. So what I do is I basically coordinate and plan the food for our community dinners. So that's about this. Right now we're serving about 350 meals. Mm -hmm. So it started off as about 35 meals, seated dinners. And we thought, okay, 35. And we were excited when it got bumped up to 75 to 100. We're like, whoa, this is really stretching us. <laughs> and then we, you know, the seated meals kept going on. And um, and now then when COVID hit, we started doing drive through And that's when... Uh, the meals count went up to about 300. Those numbers jumped. Jumped a lot. It would just changed the dynamic of the whole whole event. But yeah. yes. And now we also, not only do we do community dinners at the Dream Center every single week, but twice a month, we do a community dinner from the Nixa campus. Right. And your team and your brain also help coordinate, plan, and prep all the meals for that as well. Correct. And it's um, a little bit mind boggling sometimes when you have to try to figure out that many meals um, for 450 people. But... I count everything by ounces. That's that's how I do it. Yeah, so, so today I'm excited because you're going to share with us a little bit of your story, which uh, is beautiful to me of how serving uh, changes not just our lives, but the mm -hmm. lives of people around us. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you're going to have some helpful hints for those yes, of us that yes, are trying to make our uh, budget dollars go a little yes, further. <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> aren't we all right now? Uh, so back us up before you and I met for coffee and you're sending that email saying, hey, I think I have something to offer here. Tell me, tell me what I mean, tell me about Texas. Okay, so in Texas, it goes way back for 20 years, but I won't all that, but I started in ministry down there and we were doing, I was doing inner city, working with people from hard places, people who need help, people who need hope. And um, through that particular ministry, I adopted a little girl. And uh, my story goes backwards, but then after the adoption, then I met my husband and, and together we raised a blended family of four and got involved in a ministry on the streets of Dallas um, doing homeless ministry. And up to that point, it was primarily children's ministry, nothing to do with food, even though food has always been an integral part of serving um, because, and we can get into that a little bit later, but food and ministry kind of go hand in hand because when you feed the hunger, you can feed the soul at the same time. And then um, when our transition from Dallas to here, um, we again, we were just looking for a place. But in the meantime, we had gotten ourselves involved in foster care and um, and just really just have always had a ministry mindset in our family. And so 
again, I just felt like this was the right opportunity for the right time. When God sets set something in motion, He kind of puts a little trigger in your heart and you just know when it's right, it's right. Yeah. So I was more than happy to, and I wanted to share that with you because I felt like you and I were in similar positions mm-hmm. because I did a lot of ministry. And it, for I was those single you know, at the time. Jody, she was single when she started this, which is a big leap of faith yeah. to start something. Jennifer just, was... I don't even know if you know this. I probably never told you, which was a missed opportunity on my part. You were such an encouragement to me, not just of, okay, we can do what we're setting out to do at the Dream Center Mm -hmm. because you had seen it and you had been a part of it. But I was single when we opened this place Mm -hmm. and you were an encouragement to me that being single was not a limitation on myself in this role here because you accomplished beautiful parts of ministry when it was just you. Mm -hmm. And then when it was just you and Alex, of you and a little girl that because you were in ministry and doing what you could do in that single season, uh, your family came to you at it. Yeah, so it's really on a side note for anybody who's struggling with that in their area. Not, I'm not talking about being single, but just struggling about what God is doing. Just allow Him to do what He, what you feel like He's leading you to do, and He will put all the pieces in place. Yeah, and He just makes it your story. Your story ends up being beautiful because of the pieces that He puts into place for you. So I was super excited to encourage you with that because I knew what it was like to Mm -hmm. take a leap of faith and not even knowing the future. And you might've had other things in mind for your life, but God is directing you this way. And so it was just an exciting time. And I was actually very excited to encourage you because I remember how I felt. Yes, well, you've been, I'm telling you, you've been a gift to my family and now look at us all. (laughs) Um, So tell me, uh, we had, when we first started, we had a couple different people helping with menu planning. Mm -hmm. And as their schedules changed, you continue to say yes to stepping up. And that has really been Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best things you've taught my team and myself over the years is you are so quick to say yes when God asks you to do something, when He gives you an opportunity. And uh, so walk me through that. How how do you know when to say yes? You know, that's a really hard one to accept that you got to know your limitations, but then don't let your limitations limit you because it's something inside that you just kind of just know that's the right thing. Because I, like I said, before joining the Dream Center, I never planned food for 350 people. In fact, six, eight, 10 was maybe the amount that I had planned for, but the time of it was just right. And someone had once asked me, do you wanna do back, go back and do children's ministry? I said, absolutely not, I love cooking. Like I never thought it would be that way. But when the Dream Center first opened up, I was first asked just to help with the prep. I was given the instructions, just come in and just, I didn't order any food, didn't do any of that. And and um, and that was great. And I remember when um, it was Blake Sawyer, I'm gonna we call can you blame out, Blake, Blake, that when you had to, when your job and just life took you a different direction, you asked me and I had to take a deep breath and be like, okay, but it just felt right. Yeah. When something just feels right and, and everything falls into place, I would say that's a lot of times when God is, asking you to do something. Yeah. Uh, you and your team work not only to plan, you help uh, purchase all the food. You've mm-hmm. done an amazing job building relationships mm-hmm. uh, between us and Ozark's Food Harvest. People marvel all the time at the price we can serve families a hot meal for here. Right. And we tell them every time that it is you. And so teach us some of the ways. How have you at the Dream Center kept costs low and stewarded. I mean, people listening to The Rift today, maybe they've given before, maybe they haven't, mm-hmm. but uh, I always feel so good sharing about dinner because I know you takes you and Ashley Baker protect that mm-hmm. budget and take such good care of it that it well, does more than anything else I've seen. So Ozark Food Harvest, it's an amazing organization. I don't know if anybody knows about it, but it basically provides food for counties all over um, Southwest Missouri. And so whatever they get in, if they get it donated by an organization, then they pass it on to us for zero cost. So I always, always, the first thing I do when I go in there before I do the meal planning for the month is I check and see what's free. Mm -hmm. Because if it's free, it's free. You know, especially if there's something like meat or, you know, desserts, we hand out desserts every week, but meat or vegetables or rice or pasta. Like I jump on that um, because it is very, very difficult to find things. And if you're gonna feed 450 people, you need to get 
What if, if it's free, Whatever if they're going to give yeah. it to you, you take it. That's why I tell my kids when, when they go shopping, if they're going to give you a coupon, take the coupon. Take the coupon. <laughs> they're giving you free money. And so between Ozark Food Harvest and just finding, um, finding what they have to offer and then working the menu around what they are offering, that goes a long way. Yeah. And then this summer, we have been so blessed to have Farmer Dan um, Bigsby. From we are Farmer Dan oh, fans Farmer Dan, here. And, and he <laughs> he will provide us with fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. And uh, I was telling the team last week, I'm like, it takes a lot more work to cut up, but oh, it's so good. It's so good. They were uh-huh. making fun of me. So Farmer Dan owns Fast Night Farm. They're in the mm-hmm. middle of Springfield. If you have not been, please go. And he is so great. And so we had cucumbers a mm-hmm. couple weeks ago and everyone was making fun of me because I just eat a cucumber the way you would eat a ballpark pickle. Oh. You do, um, just take a bite. Yeah, I just cut the ends off and take a bite. Mm. And especially when it's Farmer Dan, Dan. like those are good. Mm-hmm. So uh, my favorite thing in the summer is that we get that fresh produce. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know you and the team do such a great job. We have a walk-in cooler outside, an indoor fridge, and then uh, three different freezers mm-hmm. in the building. And you guys do such a this amazing puzzle piecing together to make room so that when we get a donation of ground beef or we're picking up things from Ozark's Mm -hmm. Food Harvest, you guys know how to stuff those things to Mm -hmm. the gills. But how do you not lose track of everything? Okay, well, Ashley kind of helped me out with that because she purchased a freezer just for community dinners and now we have our freezer for just after school. So that kind of helps with that. But, you know, who would have ever thought a freezer would be something you'd excited about? But when she told me that, it just made my heart beat with joy <laughs> yeah. because I know that if I have a place to store it, then we can, then I can pick up food because the way Ozark Food Harvest works, if you don't put your name that you need it that week, then it, someone else takes it, which is great because it's a minute, someone else needs it. Right. But then we were missing out then we're, on we were missing free out. food opportunities right, and right. cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the great thing with Ozark's Food Harvest is then if it's not free, we still get it discounted yes. than what it would cost us at a store. Absolutely. Um, you buy a lot in bulk. Uh, share yes. with us a couple of your favorite recipes that you've made here. Because mm. our families, like we love to tell Jen when the families are saying, hey, this is a good one. I have my favorite, but tell me so, some of your favorites. So I think one of my favorites is chicken enchilada casserole. That was my favorite. Okay, it is so easy. It's just basically opening and and dumping things together. And I love mixing things together, like casseroles, that type of stuff, because there is no set... And this, the team in the kitchen actually gets onto me for that. They're like, how much chili powder do we need to put? I'm like, yeah, just I think a cup and then taste it. <laughs> and they're like, just tell me your amount. Let's just start with a cup, you know? Um, so chicken enchilada casserole, I, I remember the first time we did it, Jan and I, we rolled enchiladas and we quickly realized that is not going to cut it. So yeah. we made it more of a casserole style that you can serve over rice. Yeah, um, we had a team in serving a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and you made chicken enchilada, mm-hmm. rice casserole, whatever we call mm-hmm. it. And I was staying with them afterwards to debrief. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, I never get to eat on Wednesdays. All our food goes out the door. Mm-hmm. It's busy. So I actually, we saved a pan for them. You mm-hmm. made them their own pan. We sat down and ate it. And I thought, oh my gosh, no wonder it people are- It is the are- easiest recipe and- um, and just so delicious. So they it's one of my favorites. It. Yes. Yeah. So very simple. Uh, we will have to find a way to start sharing oh, from the Dream Center could, page yes. some recipes uh-huh. with you guys because Jennifer is the queen of that. Uh, Jennifer, let me tell me too because what I love is that any point in time you're in the kitchen, you've created this great team that helps you prep, mm-hmm. and you guys are like a little family. Yes, it's back almost there. like a s- small group. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it is. It's just it's like a small group, and we meet every week, and it's by word of mouth. I I believe, and I, a couple of people have been been with us since the beginning. I mean, Jan Hamilton, she's been there, and um, she was there when we did thirty five people, and yeah. I just I love her story. And then Holly Brown, she came on during COVID, and it was just a perfect opportunity. It was just her and I for weeks and weeks and weeks because of all the COVID isolation that we had to do, and yeah. so. Um, just some core people, but yes, our team is is amazing, and they just show up every week. And, and you we just guys work. prep 350 meals on the weeks we have Nixa. It's 450 mm-hmm. meals, and you do that in what amount of time? An hour and a half. Well, so I say that hour and a half we prep, and then I leave a little bit for the 
evening crew the to team, do. Yeah, the yeah. kitchen lead when we get back. Mm-hmm. I just need everyone to understand that sometimes it takes my husband an hour and a half to make one meal for three mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And you are making 350 to 450 meals. So Chuck, if you could figure that out, it'd be great. <laughs> and uh, they also, <laughs> I, you don't produce as many dishes as Chuck does well, for <laughs> 350 people. He uses every single thing we have in our kitchen. Uh, but tell me, as your little team has built over the years, mm-hmm. what is so special about getting to serve with that group of people um, in that way? I think that you just, you get to know and do life with them. Because I said, it's like having a small group. And so you get to, you, we talk about everything that's happened throughout the week, throughout their life. And we have celebrated weddings this summer. A couple of them had kids get married. So um, it's just kind of a unique opportunity to um, to sit and chat and be a, a, be a team together. And I said, we have our own little texting group that we text because I told today, I even just mentioned, hey, if you have this, bring this, it'll help prep go better. And um, Yeah, I saw Holly walked in with her own carving uh, knife today. Yeah, we were carving up ham today. So I'm like, electric knife would work wonders. Yeah, she she also, we should teach Holly how to carry an electric knife because she just came <laughs> in with the blade in her hand at the window. And I'm like, oh. if people don't know you, Holly, you just very much approached a building place with a knife as a weapon. And so. I must say, you know, it doesn't take, anybody can serve back there because um, we have Bill and Pam. Um, they have started coming. They're an older couple and, and they, um, Bill loves to work the stove and Pam will chop, chop, chop. And it doesn't take much. You don't have to know how to cook. Holly didn't know how to cook when she started. You don't have started. to know how to cook. And yeah, now I will leave Holly in charge. Yeah. So if I'm gone, Holly's in charge. And Opportunity for <laughs> all of us to learn. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it's also been a special place for your family. So at any uh, season, one of your kids has been back there with you and or I John's was, been in the gym. Gosh, I think that was one of the most special things because at the time... Um, we ha- we had John and he was only three years old when mm-hmm. I started coming to serve here because, and he um, he's eight years younger. I should tell this. He's eight years younger than our other one. We adopted him out of foster care. And so it was kind of a jolt to our system to have to recalibrate our family with everybody else being older. So I was looking for a place where we could serve where I also, if I could, need to bring John along with. And so he would run around and he at one time, he thought he owned the office. Oh, yeah. He owned Andy and his candy at the front desk. I mean, he owned it. All kids <laughs> own Andy and his candy stash, let's so, be honest. That was actually a very, um, that was very special to me that we could be actually bring him here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, five-year-old and start- John used to boss all of us around oh, yeah. in the office. He because said no. Every- that he was definitely in charge. Mm-hmm, and we loved mm-hmm. having him. Uh, are we, I probably should have asked you this before, and are we allowed to talk about that we named the kitchen after you? Oh. So Big, you can. I don't. Jennifer, I, I'm telling I you, she's like so to say humble. Mama, Mama J is for Mama Jody. Yeah. So she always people walk back there, and we have this beautiful little sign that says mm. Mama J's Kitchen, and she'll tell everyone it's me. It's not me. It is uh, the kitchen we named after Jennifer because as you spend time with her, your heart for serving people physical food. You said it earlier that when we feed their stomachs, we can feed their souls. Mm -hmm. And we get to experience that as we're passing food out and then having conversations with family. But it all starts when you sit down and you start menu planning. Mm -hmm. And while what you guys do is behind the scenes, what happens on the scene of a Wednesday dinner is not possible without the behind the scenes players. And I think oftentimes behind the scenes players get forgotten of how important their role Mm -hmm. is. And so I need everyone to know that if you walk into the Dream Center and you see Mama J, it is not me, it is Jennifer and her heart for this community. So, um, I, you know, I actually think that'd be a good video idea to have a start to finish of a Wednesday night, you yes. know? Because um, there's just so many different work. We could aspects. time lapse that. Mm-hmm. That'd be so mm-hmm. great to From see. From start to finish, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? And just kind of give people a big picture of even the pickup loads of food that has to come in, you know, to serve yeah. that many people. So, you know, it's a very, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a very unique Wednesday. The Wednesday night community dinner is just such a unique event that happens here. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it really is this idea of feed their stomachs, you can feed their Mm -hmm. soul. Everything we do at the Dream Center on the help side, we do with the intention of trying to move them Mm -hmm. into classes or other opportunities Mm -hmm. or connections. And I'll tell you, one of the ways that does that the quickest is when the food is good. Mm Mm-hmm. And because people will even come back and they'll write on there, thank you for this meal or, hey, Mm -hmm. this was awesome. They'll talk about it the following week. And so a thank you 
for doing that. Mm-hmm. I, we've learned a lot over the years. We've learned what not to make. Yeah, we have. That we will never make this again because mm-hmm. it's impossible to clean up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, I want to share a few of your tricks okay. that you have learned over the last couple of years that I know all of us get a benefit from. So let's talk about vegetables. One of our keys is we try to get vegetables into all of our meals mm-hmm. for our families. And sometimes we do that creatively yeah. because sometimes people will see a vegetable and say, I don't want to eat that. Mm-hmm. So Jennifer's gotten really good at hiding them. Tell us some of your favorite ways to hide veggies. Well, you, um, spaghetti, you can mix stuff into there. Um, we don't have, we don't really use a blender here, but you can, you know, you can put onions and green peppers into spaghetti sauce and that's an easy way. Um, if you mix... I mean, a lot of if some of the vegetables like corn, you can easily mix that into one of the casseroles, and it just comes right along, and the kids will eat it because it's tasty with something else. Mm-hmm. And so I think, and also learning which vegetables people like. So being that's a meal that's once a week, like it's not like they're getting the same vegetable every night. So right. I know that they like their green beans and they like their corn, um, peas and carrots tonight. We'll see. But <laughs> yeah, gonna test it out. It's gonna go with ham and mashed potatoes, so it'll be it'll be good. We've we've seasoned them up really good. Yeah. So. I love that. Uh tell us some of your best money saving tips that you use here, but we could also use at home. I think meal planning. Plan your meals and go to the grocery store with a meal in mind. And if you know that you're not gonna eat an entire pound of ground beef, have something else to go um to to use it for. Um I also, you know, I it sounds silly, but if you're trying to um, not have a waste in your house, count by ounces. Like if you want everybody to eat like three ounces of food, that's how I mm-hmm. count these days. Like if I, we know we have a certain number of ounces, you count by ounces. And so I definitely think the meal planning and looking for things that are on sale. And if it's something that your family eats all the time, grab one or two of it. Cause this is what I'm doing right now. Like if it's on sale and I know that they're going to eat this within the next month, then yeah. I, I buy extra of that just because you have to cost and yeah. and save wherever you can right now. Yeah. The freezer is Jen, Jennifer's friend. Mm-hmm. So when she says she got emotional when we got a freezer, she did because mm-hmm. if she can stock everything up and freeze everything that's not going to be used, she will. Uh-huh. There is no waste in this uh, this lady's life. So <laughs> No, because there's always a way to use what we can use. And in fact, if I, if I hear you guys throwing away things, I... She gets cranky. The only time I've ever seen her cranky is when we did not use something that she told us, give this away in the next week. Uh And we failed her and didn't do it. She got a little cranky with us that time. And it is only because she does not believe in waste and it's there to help somebody Uh else. So, Um, Yes, I just think being creative too with, with what you can find available. Yeah. So, and not, don't be afraid to try something new and... Take a shot. You never know. You never know what somebody's going to like. If you were to tell me the ingredients that were in enchilada casserole, I would be like, "Uh, maybe I'll like it. Maybe Mm -hmm. I won't. But if you just served it to me, like we Mm -hmm. did a couple weeks ago, I'm like, no, put that in the rotation. That is excellent. So uh, you are are one of the queens of that, of let's just try it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap up our time together here in the, the next little bit. But I want, you have served in multiple facets in different seasons of your Mm -hmm. life and give me some encouragement for someone who's out there thinking, I want to get involved, but I don't know where, I don't know how. Uh, You did such a good job of finding a space. So how does someone find a space to get involved when they're looking for that? I think if you, the first thing you need to do is just look and ask yourself, what do you like to do? Like what's natural to you? Because if it's talking to people, if that's natural to you, then you know, ask if you can join an ushering team or um, at the coffee bar at yeah. church. If it's not, if it's behind the scenes, then ask you know, um, then ask what you can do on a Wednesday or something to help set up. You know, I know that they have to put pens and and different things out in the yeah in the church area. Um, so utilize your strengths and what the things that you like to do, and. Um, and then just you just kind of go from there. Yeah. I I loved that you weren't afraid to say, "Hey, I I want to be involved." Because we're always, you know, it's an open door at the Dream Center. Well, we want people to come I in. I think no one's going to turn away a volunteer. So if you want to be involved, you just got to speak up because they will find a place for you, not just here but anywhere. Absolutely. And you know, like I would say that um, my crew here probably feels like, "Oh, we're always asking for volunteers." But you're not always asking in a way that will connect with someone's passion. And so, I think Jennifer and I are giving you permission that if yes. you're passionate about something, 
find a way to get involved. Well, and so I, you know, going back to the the prep crew that we have, I have never once had to really ask or beg for volunteers. God, I mean, they've just always kind of cycled through, and we always have enough at the right time. And so it's it's very interesting how that always happens. But if you if that's something you want to do, then just speak up and say, yeah. If you I think a to... team is full and there is no room for you, ask anyway oh, yeah. because there is still space. There's still room. There is always room for one more person mm-hmm. at that table, mm-hmm. at our prep space, at dinner. There's always room for mm-hmm. one more. So uh, what else do you have? One of the most encouraging people I know in my life. What else, if you got to give us your top two life lessons, what would you leave us with today? Well, there's one thing. So I used to, <laughs> I used to joke, we had this... Um, you can learn things from Taco Bell packages. And mm-hmm. one of the <laughs> things says, uh, one of the ones we got one time that says, why say no when you can say yes? And that's just kind of a good life motto is why say no when you can say yes? Um, and just be open to whatever gets thrown. I said, because this was not where I thought I'd be serving five years ago, but yeah. it has so fit my timing in life that I couldn't have done it differently. And... Um, and the other thing is, is life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So if it's going to be something that's going to push you out of your comfort zone, then that's going to be some of the, your best times in life because it is, it's so much. Well, Jeremy just got done doing the message, you know, the series on stretch and, you know, stretch. Um, and so just not, don't be afraid. Yeah. Just I think to, that's so good. It's so right? easy. We can hear it. We can read it on our Taco oh, Bell packet. My goodness, yeah, but, but when you we guys, start applying it, uh-huh. it's a whole new ball game. Uh-huh. So I'm so thankful mm-hmm. for you and Charlie um, and Alex uh-huh. and John. I, I would take him back here to boss us around anytime. Yeah, yeah, you just no. send him to us on breaks. Uh, the gift you guys have been to the Dream Center in uh, your ability to say yes to mm-hmm. that opportunity has not I mean, we've served over 10,000 meals and this year. Crazy to think about because we're not even, we're only halfway through. No, yeah. Don't I worry, mean, we still got the other latter half to go, which is so, we will hit a record number of meals this year mm-hmm. through that kitchen. Mm-hmm. And you have always said yes when we've said, Jennifer, I think we need to serve a few more. You've said, okay, how can we do it? How do we do this with dignity to the people we're serving, honoring them with a meal that's mm-hmm. good? and taking great care of your team. So thank you for being that example of saying yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you for being the example that in any season of life, there's an opportunity for us to serve. There is an opportunity for any season. So uh, I, you guys, if you've never met Jennifer Kennedy, she's at our Nixa campus of Mm -hmm. North Point. So you can swing by there and say hi. Or if you are looking for a place to jump in, there's always room for someone else. There's always room up here. Yes. So uh, whatever it is though, I think really what uh, Jennifer and I would encourage you to do is exactly what she said. Mm -hmm. Why say no when you can say yes? Mm -hmm. And that's not in a sense of, hey, go overextend yourself. No, We know everyone's busy. Absolutely not, no. Serving doesn't have to be a lifetime commitment. No. And serving doesn't have to be hours of your life each week. But when you have a chance to say yes to others, it will reveal more about yourself than you ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. So, and you'll grow more. I agree with that, yes. So give it a chance. Uh, Jennifer, thank you for being our guest today on The Riff. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, We hope that not only are you encouraged by Jennifer's story, but also encouraged by the impact that North Point and the Springfield community is making at the Dream Center with over 10,000 meals and counting so far this year. So uh, thanks for checking it out. We will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Riff. We'll have a brand new episode every week wherever you find podcasts.